Okay, okay, everyone, we're close to showtime. Showtime again. <laughs> Tonight's movie is, I think it's a comedy, but it also has uh, it's some good mind watching, some dramatic times in it. But, but basically, uh, in the morning when we were coming together to look at themes that were uh, coming up through this gathering, through this retreat, one of the ones that came up was control. And um, I mentioned a bit about the 12 steps and the serenity prayer. Is anybody familiar with the serenity prayer? Yes. It's up over there. Uh, basically, that's, you know, what you can control, what you cannot control, and the wisdom to know the difference. And and with the U.S. election swinging in a way that is shocking people around the world, just like the Brexit vote shocked people, uh, it's, I'm already getting questions about what's the commentary on this election and da da da. But basically, that's what this movie, the main theme of this movie is uh, giving up control, letting go of control, get, letting go of control of outcomes. And what's underneath that is giving up the belief that you can change the world. Jesus actually says in The Course in Miracles that you have no control over the world you made, meaning the ego made the world, and, and the script is written, so basically you can change your mind on how you look at the world, and that's where you need to put all your mind energy on changing your purpose, on clearing your lens, the lens as you're looking at the world, and uh, for those who are familiar at all with the Bible, uh, there's a beautiful passage in Corinthians of the Bible that says that you're looking through a darkened glass. It's a dark filter that made this world, and it's a dark filter that observes this world through the ego's lens, and that you have to clean the filter, and that's what all this purification and healing is about, just cleaning your filter, cleaning the filter of the mind, and as you clean the filter, the only result that you're interested in is your state of mind. That's the result. Peace of mind is an outcome. Happiness is an outcome. Joy is an outcome. But it's not tied into what we would call external outcomes. You have to come to a, a state of mind that is independent of what seems to be outcomes in the world. So. This movie is a good movie to show on on election day, so to speak, uh, because it's a good to focus your mind on your state of mind. Uh, they said that uh, actually there's a spike in searches that is occurring right now, and and actually there has actually been a spike on uh, on the search end of the world. <laughs> end of the world is is spiking today. And uh, and we've been talking all week about the world will end in laughter, because it was a, a place of sorrow. It has to end in a different way than it began, it seemed to begin. If the world was made in hate, the world needs to end in laughter, it needs to end in healing, it needs to end in forgiveness. And so, coming to that gentle laughter, not a laughing at something or down at something, but a gentle laughter of, oh, I was mistaken about it, thank you for showing me the, the light, thank you for showing me the truth, is very, very, very helpful. So, the main character in this movie is played by Catherine Zeta-Jones, and uh, the, the movie itself is called No Reservations. So it's not a really well-known movie, which is good. We like to see something that presents us with something new. It's going to have some parallels to, to the movie last night where the main characters, uh, she's, she's pretty much, we could say, very strongly in control of her life in this world and it's, she has some sadness and some hurt that's under the surface but it's so controlled that she's trying to manage whatever, whatever seems to be hurting in her life 
with a very controlled life. And then there's going to be a man, a man and a, a, a young girl, the same uh, actress that was in our, our movie, um, The Ultimate Gift, the, the cute girl with the pink umbrella, the, uh, that actress, she's going to come in here again. This is the second movie of the retreat is like the can opener to really pop this idea of control. Just like she did in, in that movie. She was an instrument for the spirit for breaking out of control. So we may stop it a couple times, but again, most of the times with these kind of movies, these are character transformation movies. So you can see the spirit at work and then you can start to bring that back to your own life and say, ah, I'm, I'm worthy of the same kind of opening, loosening of control, learning to develop trust, and, and being carried higher and higher in awareness by the spirit. That's the whole point of all of this. Okay, let's roll them. And we will be probably joined by some other people who, this is movie night. Jeff uh, does a regular movie and it's usually on Wednesday nights, but um, he's shifting it to Sunday night. So for you, those of you in Australia and if anybody joins us from Europe, those are the time zones that can really take advantage of these. But uh, you might check with Jeff uh, before you go back to where you're going. If you have a pretty good internet uh, connection, like a broadband connection, then you can tune in and, and watch movies together online using a software called Zoom, which is free. And you can participate in movie gatherings like this from wherever you are in Australia if you have a strong enough connection. So just check with Jeff and he'll, he'll let you know. Okay. Roll them. No reservation. Okay, beautiful. That's another great movie of the you could see the progression of trust, the growing of trust that was required to overcome the fear, to overcome the control issues. And that's what we mean by a retranslation of perception. The Holy Spirit doesn't destroy what the ego made, the Holy Spirit uses what the ego made to take the mind higher, so to speak, in, to go higher in awareness and consciousness. And, and basically, there has to be something that comes in as a substitute for the fear. And that's where the, the trust has to grow stronger and stronger. You can see the beginning phases of this movie was a dismantling. She was, the lead character was so in control of everything in the restaurant. Then with Zoe coming in, and then the man coming in, you know, little by little it was started to wash away her control, and yet she had a great fear of loss. Like she would lose her restaurant, and her identity was so tied into the restaurant. He said, you're more than that. So she kept getting those little symbols that there was more, and little by little as she started to feel more the trust taking hold, and opening and expanding, then that's where she started to relax and, and open up. And uh, you can see the gentle progression that that is there through the movie. That's how the Holy Spirit has to work. There has to be a gentle progression and there has to be not any kind of destruction, but a sense of, uh, of a washing away of what was before and like inserting the the love and the connection that's that's there. <coughs> so it's great that these kind of movies really give you uh, an inspiration of how it can go in your life. When you look at different aspects, where you have an extraordinary extraordinary amount of control, and you have to come to that place where you start to let go of the reins, let go of the reins of all that control. So, yeah, just wanted to hear what everybody felt about it, and that that was like an answer to prayer when we wanted to get into the point of, of addressing control. That was one of the areas we didn't 
uh, touch earlier today, but that's that movie really shows it in, in a broader context of how we need to develop that trust. It's really in the spirit, but but it's reflected in our relationships when we feel we can trust those that are around us, then it's really what we're trusting is the Holy Spirit as we move deeper and deeper into this. Okay, so any feelings, reactions, insights? Angie's right here. I was just going to say that um, it was to me showing me a beautiful, beautiful example of um, a way in unwinding because from here I have to go home to a place where I have my own business and quite a complex um, situation with businesses and companies and setting up companies and shops and all sorts of things that I sort of have for some time now not wanted anymore and have absolute no interest in um, and just before I came on this retreat I was at a point where I would sit at the desk and just not be able to function and you know just knowing that this retreat was coming up was sort of like a bit of a like the Holy Spirit saying you know just wait um, but I would sit there and sort of just think I, I can't do this anymore, I don't want this anymore and I suppose I'd been thinking how how can that, how can I unwind from that situation and I'm now sort of seeing different pictures and signs and symbols that I don't have to unwind from it, I just have to let go um, and the unwinding will happen so it's a real encouragement to me yeah, to just let go moment by moment. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad you were inspired by that. She basically, she, in the movie, she just would hang on to something until she couldn't do it anymore. And then that set up the opening for what was to come next. And I've worked with so many people where we look at the self-concept and they feel that they know that there's some shifts and changes coming in the self-concept, the Holy Spirit will will bring those about and it will be obvious and um, my friend Lisa Fair, she basically was a, a CEO of a company and she started going out occasionally on trips with me, travels to gatherings and having the miracle pour through, feeling more inspired, go back to her company that she was the CEO of and progressively uh, it was her co-workers and her employees that basically said, you know, we got it, you know, just follow your heart, follow your joy, and don't be concerned, we've got it, it's all going to work out. And then she would continue on still doing some of the function, like an annual meeting, she was supposed to speak at the annual meeting, and then one annual meeting came where she got up in front of everyone the, her nurses had come, they brought their children for this annual meeting and she was supposed to deliver like the, the like almost like the state of the business, a, a report to everyone there. And she walked up and she stood there and she read a few lines and she just said, I can't do this. In some cases when, when you have that strong feeling to let something go, if you don't, and It'll come out at some point. She had to walk away. But as she stepped down and asked her office manager to finish giving the report, because she couldn't, she just said, I can't do this anymore. She was honest, transparent. She went back to the back of the room and she kept hearing Jesus in her mind saying, Gather the children and go into the church. And the meeting hall was right next to a church. And she thought, I am not <laughs> going to do that. And then Jesus said, gather the children and go into the church. No, no, I, I will not gather the children very firmly and go into the church. 
So she said, come on kids, come on. And they all went with her over to the church and then she started singing with them about, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And, and there she was speaking in a church and that was another calling into her, her ministry of what her purpose was on, on earth. Uh, away from a CEO and into this that she was called into and it, that was just one step of many that would follow but once we let go of the grip once we let go of what we're holding to and we're so identified with that we feel defines us but feels very tight and pressured and limiting then the spirit will come right in with the next step and it just keeps going like that and going and going and we realize we can't control the direction of this awakening. I think he actually gave me... Um... I think he... Um, looking back, I had like a, a warm-up session because years ago um, I had... I, I was led into a job that was um, involved a lot of travel. It was a, um, a responsible job. I had a car. It was sort of a... You know, it was a house and everything and this really job that sort of looked absolutely perfect. And um, I did a lot of travelling around and visiting businesses and one day I called in, I went to call t into a business and I sat in the car and I went to go for the handle of the car to get out and I physically couldn't move. I couldn't reach for the handle and I'm sort of like, what's going on? What's going on? And no matter how hard I tried I couldn't open the door of the car until I sat there for about 20 minutes um, until it sort of sunk through with me you know and I'm listening it's you have to leave your job and I drove back to the office wrote out a resignation um, handed it to the manager and then walked out the office and practically singing and skipping down the hallway and people were saying to me, what's going on? Oh, I just quit. What? What are you doing? You know, like, but I was just so joyful and um, I think that was like a warm-up session for sort of letting go of something bigger and I went and picked grapes for three months and absolutely loved it and then got sent to America and sort of then, but, but just that, just that um, that strong message that I physically could not move and get out of the car. It was just so clear. Um, so experience can be so different. But I think this one, with this winding down, will be different again. But it's still trust, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry. No, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for witnessing to that. It's also, Jesus says, you cannot wake yourself but you can allow yourself to be awakened. In this journey we will always, always, always be in the humble position of listen and follow. And then as we listen and follow and we let the voice for God go before us, speak to us, at some point it makes speak through us and and that will still be an opportunity to listen and follow, even when you're letting the voice speak through you. It still is an opportunity. Like you just show up and you behold what's, what's given and you allow the Spirit to perform miracles through you. But uh, it's, it undoes this ego belief that you can create yourself, that you, you are the creator of your own identity. You're given a series of up steps in which there are self-concepts, but every self-concept the Holy Spirit gives you will be part of an expanding awareness, taking you higher and higher and higher in awareness toward forgiveness, which, which is a shared identity. You go beyond the personal into a state of mind of forgiveness, which is, which is shared. It's capable of being shared with the Holy Spirit, so, yes. When you mentioned that we cling on until we can cling on no longer, that called to mind an event in my late 20s where I was flipped out of a whitewater raft into a whirlpool and there was very big water after the monsoon. It was in Nepal. It was at dusk and I got pushed down despite having a life vest on and I was under for a long time, about four and a half minutes. And I remember going through these phases of 
oh, I'll be right, I can swim out, to then, gosh, this is hard, to panic. Wow, I don't know if I can get out of here. And then sorrow when I thought of my mum and I said goodbye to her and and then I then to to gratitude of having had a great life and then acceptance that this was the day I met my maker and as soon as I and this was all very quick this transition in my mind because I'd already been under a few minutes and I was screaming out to take a breath in my my body was and I couldn't resist it anymore and as soon as I got to that place of acceptance and handing it over I actually I didn't consciously hand it over but I, I said okay I accept it now I, I made a choice to stop fighting and accept it and I had this incredible sense of peace that overcame me and this sense of anticipation I wasn't sad at all there was no panic it was the most blissful peace I can think of <coughs> that I've ever experienced and then the most it wasn't words of God but I've always said it was a divine intervention and I wasn't even on a spiritual journey so much back then but I've always said this this image popped into my head out of divine intervention of instead of trying to go up against the force of the water picture of me duck diving hitting the bottom going out to the side and going with the water just going with the flow but it didn't come into my head until I'd accepted the situation and what I thought was inevitable that then the Holy Spirit intervened and it saved my life and coming up, I actually had to clamp my hand over my nose and mouth to stop myself from breathing in because I could not resist anymore. But mm-hmm. did it save my life just accepting and stopped, I stopped arguing with reality and it was incredible, that feeling. So, I, But I had to be, you know, it was life and death, clinging on by my nails to the very end. And that, what you said, reminded me of sometimes you have to be taken right to the edge mm-hmm. before you let go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. You'll never be given more than you can handle, but it, that was like really surrendering, <laughs> very much so. Yeah, thank you. It's beautiful. Very good. Yes. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody for the last two movies for allowing me to have the subtitles. Um, and for the people at home. Uh, I really appreciated that and it makes uh, the world a difference to me. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. I was surprised how happy she was, that chef lady. You know, despite the high level of stress in the thing she seemed quite serene there somehow in her little stressed world quite interesting i mean i know it's only a movie but (laughs) she was right in there somewhere you know yeah she seemed to be able to go into the uh the freezer to collect herself (laughs) when she needed it which is important you know we all have those times where we just need to step out Get away, chill. <laughs> yeah. She was still fairly compassionate with the with the co-workers. She wasn't yeah. nasty to them. So yeah. Until she comes just jamming a steak on the table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She had a mind that wouldn't have compromised. Yeah. Yeah, it was good because she, yeah, with the co-workers she was quite good and then with the, the clients, uh, kind of it was a, just get pushed to the edge. But in the end, when she did uh, slam the steak down, on the raw steak on the table, and then when she, she did walk out, take her apron off and walk out, she says, ah, oh, that, that felt so good. <laughs> so, you know, again, that was the threshold she had not crossed. Uh, the job threshold, because her identity was so tied in to the job, she didn't want to cross that threshold. But eventually, with all circumstances considered with Zoe and with her partner, you know, that that kind of got to the point where she was willing to go through that threshold too. At the very end, and of course, then it, it comes around as a blessing where there's uh, 
there's a symbol of a shared uh, shared restaurant, which is beautiful too. That's a beautiful symbol to end the movie on, because there was such a sense of possession and pride and ownership, and, and, and even superiority that was all tied into that. And this is a good example of how the spirit can use commerce and use skills and ownership and all that in a soft way to unwind the mind from those identities and take the mind higher and higher. So it's another one of our Movie Watchers Guide to Enlightenment movies where we all went, mm, first time we saw it, mmm, it's a good one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I felt the, the therapist was a bit of a useless therapist, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, never won, he? He never got down to the beliefs of... Uh... <laughs> I'm just saying that the, the, the therapist never had a labyrinth there. No. <laughs> 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 to take her down to her real core beliefs, you know. <laughs> oh, I, think, I think he missed on that. Yeah, he seemed a little more of what uh, we might call Carl Rogers, a Rogerian therapist, mm -hmm. um, which Carl Rogers came along and he um, came up with this therapy, he was a humanistic uh, psychologist, and he came up with this therapy called self-directed therapy. And Carl believed that every client uh, had goodness inside. And his approach to counseling was not directive therapy, intervening and trying to guide and lead the therapy, which is what traditional therapies had been about. His practice was offer the client unconditional positive regard. That was the point of the therapy. Offer the, ther the patient the client, unconditional positive regard, trusting so fully that they have the answers inside that they will make it through. And, uh, and his therapy became known as person-centered instead of uh, like therapist-centered in a very directive way. So it was interesting. Um, I was quite inspired by Carl, and I've mentioned already Abraham Maslow, they were buddies. <laughs> Those two, Carl and Abraham, had this belief that people were good inside. Mm -hmm. Abraham studying the healthiest people he could find, and Carl saying, <coughs> I think my therapy will work if I offer unconditional positive regard. I think they will heal automatically because they have that goodness inside. And uh, as a side note, uh, the Course in Miracles came about with the scribe Helen Schuckman and, and her boss, who was the comforter that helped keep her calm during those seven years of bringing the Course through. And, and as a little bit of background, uh, if you go back a little in Bill Thetford's very amazing career, he was a very well-respected uh, psychologist at the time the Course in Miracles came through, but, but he was a graduate assistant of Carl Rogers. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had him preparing for his role by working under Carl Rogers as all these things. So this therapist for sure um, uh, exhibited a lot of patience and uh, seemed to let her go in the direction and, and make, even make comments about, you know, and I'm paying for these suggestions <laughs> when she disagreed <laughs> was off the therapy and basically uh, you know went with it and sometimes even got lost in some of her recipes <laughs> the taste of it and everything but in the end you know he basically uh, it, it was a long-term kind of a therapy but it's yeah very unconventional very very like Sanjeev was saying, it's very unconventional, but, but you know, again, the Spirit just wants to offer loving acceptance, and really that's what heal, heals. Jesus actually at one point dictated a psychotherapy pamphlet after he dictated the Course. Psychotherapy, purpose, process, and practice. And in his psychotherapy pamphlet, Jesus said, 
healing occurs the instant that the therapist forgets to judge the patient. So that's quite a line. Healing occurs the instant that the therapist forgets to judge the patient. And oftentimes it, it doesn't seem practical, but uh, he even talks about the question of payment and, and that the healer should uh, ultimately be guided in terms of charging and always remember that, that every patient brings a gift. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will ask payment, and sometimes the Holy Spirit will not ask payment. So it's, it's a very practical little pamphlet. And I believe in the, of course, in the later editions of the course, it's been published uh, a number of times that they've included the Song of Prayer and the Psychotherapy pamphlet right in with the text, the workbook, and the manual. So if you buy a later edition, you uh, believe it's the third edition or beyond, uh, you'll get uh, all of those included in there. So it's good. This, this uh, therapist basically <laughs> was outside the box. Yes. And you were saying, yeah. One more comment just came to my mind. Um, I was reading only yesterday morning in the book that um, there is no, something like that, there are no accidents in your life, like kind of like it's all planned by, by the Lord and or by the God and uh, you accept it if you want to be happy and if you don't accept it you can be sad. So in the in in that chef's life that that accident of her sister dying in that obviously the car accident and then Zoe appearing in her life that's what was the changing or the turning point in her losing the control ultimately you know like the control freak she she was in a in a normal sense of events that's a sad event in life you know losing your sister but the book, the course says there are no accidents in life. So, and, and it says there's a prayer up at the top that you, you receive what you ask for. So my, is that true? Like she would have in a way subconsciously asked for that, some, something drastic like that to happen for her sister to get killed and then leaving her, her own daughter in, his, in her care to soften her control? Like, is that how it kind of it all works? That's that's just came to my mind. It'd be interesting to hear your thinking behind that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it. It certainly doesn't seem that way from a human perspective, but uh, there have been some Carolyn Mace and some amazing uh, teachers have talked about soul contracts that that everything is contracted and um, decided way back. You might say way back in the mind or way back in the what the soul as it's constructed in that that way but but yeah it's all part of a, a prearranged plan and basically it, it fits in what I was saying at the very beginning that instead of looking at the specifics of of like a sister dying or the specifics of of what happens, it's always best to remember that um, that we're opening our awareness to a pre-arranged plan in which we always have the choice of our state of mind <laughs> and that everything else in our life, as much as it seems like it's open, it's open to decisions and we can consciously choose various things and so forth, that, that there's a a much, much deeper realm in which uh, everything is playing out as it must and that we still have our choice of am I going to judge it or am I going to behold it with the Holy Spirit. That's always what we're practicing regardless of the situation. So are those details chosen? Um, yeah, they're part of an ancient script, and and are symptoms chosen? Yes. Are uh, specifics chosen? Yes. 
he makes it very clear, everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. And he even says in the workbook, what happens is what I desire. And what, I, what does not occur is what I do not want to happen. It's, it's just within the realm of, of the mind, everything. There is nothing that is not a decision. But then when you go deeper into this experience of forgiveness, you start to realize that, that really, when you really cut through all these ideas of choosing specifics and so on and so forth, you, st you come all the way back to this awareness that purpose is the only choice. That what is it for is the most helpful way of holding on to looking at decision. That if you really want to cut through a lot of complexity and cut the chase and zoom into the atonement, the one question that you can ask with anything safely is what is it for? You can ask it with your, with your job, with your relationships, with the circumstances in your life. Even when you go to the store and you're contemplating buying something, still the most helpful question is, what is this for? Will this carry me toward the light? Or will this bind me to illusions? Will this freeze my self-concept and delay my awakening? Or will this loosen my self-concept and take me towards the light? <coughs> Remember, everything in this world is backwards and upside down. So when things appear as opportunities, really, it's really important to to, as best you can, to be aware of the question, what is it for? Will this serve the light? Will this be for the greatest good of everyone in the universe? <laughs> you see, the parameters are much broader than like a specific uh, desire or want of a human being. It goes way beyond that. But the more we're open to it, the more we can start to feel the blessing. And sometimes we can feel that when things seem to be really extreme in our life and, and we even have the thought like, hmm, there was a time I would really be upset, but strangely enough I'm very calm <laughs> at this moment. And, and it feels good to have that calmness, like a surrender, like, ah, oh, there's something working here for the good. And uh, if we come full circle again with the, the election results, uh, I've already got a, a, someone's written to me on Facebook saying, please comment on <laughs> the election results. <laughs> but I'm commenting on the election results in your mind. Uh, which voice are you electing to follow? Which outcome, peace, or fear is, are you going to follow in your mind? And, and the responsibility of realizing you, you can choose your state of mind. You can always choose to be peaceful and happy. You, don't, you are not at the mercy of outcomes of form and of the world. So, uh, yeah, it's quite profound that we had a movie of letting go of control <laughs> and uh, Yes, we still, unless anybody's been sneaking on their device, we don't see anybody know the result. No, it doesn't so, matter to this group. <laughs> Jeffrey says, it's over. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Trump is the president. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, from what we're talking about here, we all asked for it. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> and everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. <laughs> He's been elected. Now, there was a Bulgarian psychic who did predict, she's passed away, but years ago, that predicted that 
the United States, the African American president would be the last president of the United States. So the inauguration is until January, and this Bulgarian psychic was actually about 75-80% accurate in her lifetime. She has a pretty, which would mean that we could have some very interesting shit. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Uh, so we should, we're going ahead with our mind training and moving forward here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you all. Thank you. That was a beautiful, beautiful experience together again. And I think as Sue was sharing that tomorrow there still are the, there's the, the Tai Chi. I'm here. Hmm? Breakfast, Tai Chi, breakfast, and then uh, we really have to look at the, t was our time frame going to be 9 or 9.30 to 11? 9 to nine. 11. Okay, yep. 9 to 11. That'll be our, we'll have a sharing where you have an opportunity to go around and share your insights and share your miracles with each other. And also, it'll be recorded so that it really sends out a ripple of blessings. Uh, you never know what what your sharing will will bring in terms of extending the blessing. And then uh, we'll work towards uh, an eleven o'clock, like a closing circle, perhaps outdoors, unless it's raining or something like that. But. Uh, that will come at the very end. And I think if some people have to leave early to uh, to catch a flight or anything, I think that's all been arranged. Sue's aware yeah. of everything. Yeah, there are a few people that are leaving. Early. It's on, I think, yep. Maybe about five of you, I think, aren't there? Yeah. Very good. Just say goodbye to Zoom. And we have Zoom. Oh, yeah, that's right. our Zoom group. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Oh, there's. Thank you. Oh. It's Katie, isn't it? I don't know. Well, that's what's on the screen. <laughs> don't look at the screen, look at the computer. <laughs> it's virtual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zoom movie nights. Beautiful. This is going to move now to Sunday. Yep. Okay. The next one will be a week Sunday. Week Sunday. So if any of you want to tune in for a Zoom movie night here in Australia, the, the week Sunday at what time? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Australian Eastern, whatever, AADT, whatever that stands for. Very good. Is there, is there a website that they should sign up for that? Um, just, yeah, they can go to livingmiracles.org. Um, LM Virtual. LM Virtual. And then on livingmiracles.org. And then just sign up. I think you can download on your computer a, a, a free uh, Zoom software. And if you've got a smartphone and you have good internet, you can inter download a Zoom app or on your uh, iPad or on your phone if you want to participate and watch a movie on your phone with others around Australia and mainly the world of Europe. Europe, yep. Yeah. Asia, yeah. Asia and, and Japan. Europe. Japan yeah. is yeah. in our time zone. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Is there any questions Any questions from the our panel? Uh, Zoom Zoom panel. <laughs> no, they're good. Yeah. 
Okay. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.